Hello and welcome to another X-Ray Tech video. Today we're going to be talking about best practices on Zapier. Now this tutorial is an intermediate and advanced tutorial, so if you're looking for beginner stuff, link in the description. Today we're going to be talking about how to manage your automation infrastructure if you have 10 plus Zaps and really managing workflows and automations for multiple people. So if that sounds like you, this is the tutorial for you and we're going to cover these five steps that will make sure that you can help manage these automations at scale. So let's get into it. So a lot of times in automations, you want to maybe execute the first couple of steps and then actually add a filtering step where if that filter is passed, then you would do additional steps or if that filter has failed, then you stop there. Adding filters allow you to extend your automations in a way that doesn't force you to recreate an entirely new automation that fits that specific circumstance. So if you're only on one automation platform right now, you haven't run into this problem yet. But if you have a few zaps on Zapier, a few scenarios on Integramat, and maybe a few setups in Unito, you might want to consider building an activity log and this is going to post a record saying what automation ran and what that automation URL was. And any variables associated with that run is gonna go directly into your activity log. Now, having your activity log list all of these things that are happening really helps you understand from an operational perspective what happened, right? If you ever need to debug or go back or audit yourself, for if anything, you know, did this thing get paid on time? Did this email get sent on time? Whatever the question may be, having an activity log is the no code way of having a console log like a full blown application. So it's a really low bar to just having a tremendous visibility into what the robots are doing and how all of your automation tools are firing in sequence or not. The first thing you need to figure out when you're debugging and something that you thought was automated didn't quite automate the way that you thought it was going to is did that automation even run at all? If it did run, what data did it run with? And the data that it ran with, was that similarly structured data to the data that you built the automation on? So for example, if uh, you build an automation around email parsing and the subject line is really important for something that you extract and you get an email that didn't have a subject line, does your automation fail? Could you add other things into that automation, like a filtering step or a more specific search that would allow that automation to adjust to different structured or different shaped data? When you're debugging, you really need to figure out one, did it run already? Two, uh, if it did run, what data did it run with? And three, is the way that the automation is structured now able to handle the data that was passed into that automation, which caused a failure? The answer is yes, then maybe just try rerunning the zap, right? Just rerun the zap or rerun the, the automation and hopefully that time it goes through. The answer is no, and you need to create a more specific search or you need to add a filtering step or you need to add a delay because things happen too fast, right? Those are all things that you can duplicate the zap and uh, make those adjustments in your construction and hopefully rerun uh, the, the automation and um, that should work just fine. Our next tip is gonna be called round tripping. So if you have an operational database or a centralized place on Airtable or G Sheets that you're putting all of your automated information, round tripping is gonna help you save a lot of steps and is also gonna be really useful. So let's pretend in your automation, you want to uh, trigger something and then create a Google Doc uh, and maybe you'll end up sending a notification into Slack or Microsoft Teams that says, hey, this new document just got created. In your operational database, you're going to uh, round trip all the way back from, hey, do we wanna create this document? And the automation says, yes, we definitely wanna create it. And then you go create that Google Doc. Round tripping is when you come back to your 
uh, Airtable operational database and you put the alternative link, right? Or the, the, the URL for that newly created document into the operational database so that you can refer to it later. Or maybe another automation can come grab that and send it out in an email. So round tripping is going to be uh, something that kind of bookends your, your automation, where you'll start with something, you'll create a whole bunch of information in the middle, and then you'll come back to your operational database and dump data into it. Uh, it's just a really clean way of allowing your operational database to really update itself, right? It's able to run these automations, create this new information, and then come back to the operational database and, and save it and use it later. Our next tip is around emoji codes. So if you use Airtable and Zapier specifically, or really Airtable and any automation platform, adding emojis into the column titles, the column names, is really helpful inside of the automation tools to seeing what you can or can't do inside of that specific column. So for example, in Airtable, if you have a formula field, there is no possible way for Zapier to input data into a formula field. It needs to import data into the other fields that maybe Airtable is calculating a formula field for, but it can't input data directly into the formula field, right? That's not how formula fields work in Airtable. By using emojis, you're able to, to sort of augment the information that you see inside of Zapier. So if you put a do not enter sign inside the column title, then inside of Zapier, you'll see that do not enter sign emoji and you'll know, oh, I can't update this field, even though um, the field shows up in Zapier and you're able to insert a variable into Zapier, it will never actually process into Airtable because that's just not how Airtable works, right? Formula fields can't be edited by external automation software. So using emoji codes really help highlight what you can and can't push data into from your automation software. And for other people coming in and working with the Airtable base that you might be working with now, having emoji codes, a simple, you know, red, yellow, and green light system really helps people understand what they can and can't touch, uh, especially as you start to grow a lot more automated infrastructure. Um, simple, simple, you know, red, yellow, green lights and do not enter signs, robot faces, uh, lightning bolts to say that automations get triggered off of this view. All of those types of things uh, will make it abundantly clear inside of Zapier and to your team what uh, they should be paying attention to. So I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Like and subscribe really helps the show. And as always, links and resources are in the description down below. And I hope this video helped you keep the flow. See you next time.